Hey everybody and welcome back to Black Arrow Gaming, I'm Bob and we're here for another episode of Agent Wonders 3. Uh, you might be able to notice my audio is a little bit louder uh, this time around. I bumped it up in my last Planetfall episode and I went even a little bit louder here. Just trying to get the balance right, have it comparable to most other videos on YouTube. So uh, hopefully it sounds good. Um, the other thing I did want to mention is I just updated my webcam software. So fingers crossed. Hopefully that's all working correctly. But let's get into it for a, uh, for this episode. I, there's there's um, made basically one giant glaring flaw. One, one thing I did wrong in the last episode, very, very, very wrong, is that um, both... Okay, so I've got uh, this spell active. Overview panel and uh, Inspire Loyalty. Gives all of my heroes... Um, inspiring, inspiring loyalty or whatever that buff is called. Basically, it gives all the units in every hero's army volunteer. That's great, except for the problem, which was pointed out to be by a, a lot of people. Um, I think it was Impregnable, Aunt Shredbeard, and Ad, Adam James all mentioned this, was that uh, this, I've split up and I have both my heroes in the same army. So the volunteer benefit um, is getting wasted for one of those heroes. I need to move that hero into a different army and uh, and then have them lead their own army. It also doesn't make any sense that um, one of the heroes, this this was one of those three people pointed this out, but it, it's also bad because this guy's sacred arm ability is just not getting used because he has to be the army leader. So I've had these two heroes traveling in the same group for a while. I need to fix that. I do want to talk a little bit about what I am doing with this group of people right here. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually send this guy back right now um i'm going to i need to start building at least a small army a small group of people to go over here and uh, defend this city because i'm going to be able to buy this city in two turns and there's still that eldritch pit down there whether i like it or not so um I'd, ideally it'd be good to have some range maybe some blight doctors on the wall or something like that to help deal with uh the the shock serpents um, I could send a Blight Doctor back, but they I feel like they're a little too useful to have with me on the front lines for me to do that. Um, a Marauder would be practically useless on its own. Although, I might, I don't know, the Marauder doesn't really have a place in this group. I guess it's a unit with a shield. I'm going to send a Warg back, because I think he's more needed up here. Um, and then this guy can, can join up with that group. And then what I'm going to do is... Um, this whole bunch can move a little bit further, but I'm going to leave the dwarf back so that he can kind of just get his own army there. Um, I'll probably send... Actually, we'll keep the silver rank guy down here. I'm going to send this one back. Actually, no, they got enough support. I'll send the silver rank back. He's going to be kind of like the de, de facto army leader for that group up there. But then I can form into two full stacks of six here with no trouble. So I'll put these guys with my king, my king is there. So these guys going with the Theocrat, uh, that guy goes with the Theocrat, and then this guy can go with the king. Um, I'm gonna reform them a little bit uh, for the coming battle because I actually need the Necromancer and primarily melee units so they can benefit from Sacred Arms to clear this tomb, um, but then I'll kind of get them back into shape later on. This Untouchable is okay to continue exploring in this direction, I think. Um, but I believe there was lost souls in this area, and they never, they didn't go after me, so I guess that's nice. I also had a request to just edit the lost soul battles out. I'm going to try to remember to do that. There's really no reason to have them in if I'm just running away, um, so I, I will, I will try to, try to remember to do that. Make a count or something of how many times it happens per episode. This should be fairly easy to spot during editing, but, uh, we'll see what happens. Last thing I did want to mention is a general question from both Astroflow and Jeff, both asked this in the comments of the last episode, was, uh, can you freeze use freeze water on lava? My presumption is no, that it would only work on actual water, but I can't say I've ever tested that before. I can't test it yet because I don't have the freeze water spell, but if somebody knows or has tried it before, you could just throw that in the comments. I'm sure they would appreciate it. I'm gonna move this goblin back and grab this gold. Would love to go grab this gold here, but the problem is that it's all kind of blocked off by rock cavern walls, that darker colored there, and uh, the mill, which is blocking his way through. He can't go through and kill all the horses. So um, I see this is blocked off down here by that uh, magma forge. So this guy's just gonna come running up and around. 
At this point, the uh, untouchables are more or less just praying that the haunted boneyards, which seem to be everywhere, because there's one here, and there's one here, and there's one over here. Yeah, there's a lot of haunted boneyards around me. Dang, that necromancer's gonna have to get some work in. Fortunately, he is coming down this way, so um, that will be helpful. All right, so I got this guy here. Oh, for a second, I thought that was a wandering army of giants. Fortunately, it is not. Um, there is a city up here, and I, I, I did make, I did meet them. Okay, I met them, um, but they are not happy with me. I'm going to have this guy go. Probably follow the road in this direction. See where it leads. You can already see there are more. Another haunted boneyard there. Holy crap. These things are everywhere. Uh, let's see if I can... I'm just... One of these is going to spawn something and kill somebody. Um, I want to get a sense of how close that... That's basically right above my capital, which makes me a little nervous. Because I'm not sure... I don't think they'll wander more than 14 tiles away from their spawn. And I'm probably okay, because they'd have to go pretty far up to get to that cave entrance. But technically speaking, they'll attack stuff within a 14 tile range. So there, if there was a cave entrance like right here, the fact that I'm underground wouldn't protect me um, as far as I know. But I don't think they'll go all the way up to that cave entrance to come down after my capital. If I'm wrong about that, somebody please let me know because I'm gonna have a really bad day if that does happen. Wait a second, who is up here? Is that? Oh, I think I got my Marauder confused with my scout in the last episode. I think somebody actually commented about that, and I misread, must have misread their comment. The scout's the one who should really be up here, but, uh, whatever. Oh no, the Marauder went, he popped up a different cave entrance, that's right. This scout was, my plan was to send him up here all along, okay. Uh, he is a little bit blocked in there. Can move down there one more. Um, I might try to get him on the water and explore a little bit that way. That is the end of this turn. I am not going to be casting any mana because I really am going to need it quite soon. In fact, on the next turn, I'm going to need some um, because I need to start converting the territory under this fort as soon as, or sorry, under this fort down here that I'm building, as soon as I can to get that wetlands boost for the goblins so that when I plant my city down there, it's ready to go. Um, glad I picked up a little bit of extra gold because I do need that to uh, to get stone walls in that fort as soon as it's done building, um, and then hopefully I'll be able to get that city up very quickly. I need to I, my army needs to clear that vault of knowledge quite soon because the sooner I can start mass producing swarm darters, the better. I'm a little bit at a range deficiency. Okay, here is the lost soul battle, the first one for this episode, so probably will be back to you guys in a second. Okay, and then it was that brave Sir Robin bravely ran away. All right, he is good. Lost souls are just absolute nuisance, but not necessarily dangerous. Oh, I did have that other hero join offer pop up. Tigran Dreadnought. Um, so I think I had a halfling necro offered to me last time. A Tigran Dreadnought wouldn't be bad. They do have some healing, but I really, really want that sorcerer. The problem is that if I don't take this, I'm going to be stuck with whatever it gives me on the next round. I'm going to roll the dice one more time, I think. Um, mm, let's look at his talents, at least. Fire spit is okay fire musket everybody's got that athletics is just good on tigrans i like that he's oh that he's lucky from the the shooting stars event yeah there's nothing really that stands out to me about this guy that makes me really want to pick him up i'm gonna close and say i require another type of hero i really really want a sorcerer okay my settler is done so that's good news Head down here. I do need to save enough mana or gold. It was 200 gold for that guy, so I need to make sure I save enough um, on this turn so that by the next turn I'll have more. Uh, this can upgrade to Stone Fortress, so we'll do that now. And I'm going to go ahead and terraform 
some of these tiles, so I can flood fields. And it, you'll notice I can flood the fields directly. I, I can do this directly adjacent to the city center, which you can't normally do. You can do that with a fort and kind of prep the land for whatever you're going to build on there. Um, and then you can you can get like a nice boost that way. Um, I think I'm gonna, okay, so it's 12 per, that's 36. I've got enough to do all these core ones. I don't know if I'll be able to expand out far, but it, it really is gonna need them because it really is going to need them because the lava, the goblins hate lava, so it's going to, I'm going to need to kind of balance that out. Okay, um, crap, I didn't want to use that all my mana, like, right off the bat, though, because I'm going to have a decently tough battle coming up here. Well, it's too late to go back now. I don't think you can cancel that once it started terraforming. Um, I need to bring the best of the best into this battle. It's all going to be Theocrat stuff. I think I've gotten him. Okay, he's got more upgrades he can do. So I think uh, I can't. I have 11 mana, so I'm not going to be able to cast Smite, unfortunately. Uh, strong Will might be good. Let's maybe turn Undead and Undead Slayer would be good for this one. I'm going to take a quick peek and see what's in here before deciding who to bring with me. Oh, it's a Dread Reaper. Crap. Uh, I might have to pass up on that battle because I don't want to take chances with a Dread Reaper. Not without Smite. Even with Smite, it could it could kill somebody, and they would just be gone. Plus, there's plenty of reanimators. I think that's more trouble than it's worth right now. I'm gonna abort that attack. Cancel, cancel, cancel. We're not gonna be able to clear that right now. We'll come back later for it. Um, this stuff here is really not important enough to me for me to detour out of the way to go get it. And it's also embedded in rock walls. Um, maybe later when I have a surplus of units, but for now, I think it's far more important for me to get down here and clear this stuff. This is also unfortunately embedded in rock walls, which is going to make for a decently difficult battle because I'm only going to be able to get one group in there, but that's far more important for me to clear. Um, Halflings shouldn't be too bad if they're underground, and now their morale is normal. And I'm definitely not taking those halflings on during shooting stars, although it is ending on the next turn anyway. Okay, let's uh, get everybody back together then. Um, yeah. And I'll have to decide who I think is the best matchup for those units. In this case... I'll leave my army separated for now, but I'll bring both heroes in on that battle. And then uh, as much other good stuff as I can muster. These guys are uh, have spirit protection, so the Theocrat not particularly useful against them, but maybe against some other things. Um, they don't have any other kind of protection, though. I'm thinking the Blight Doctors might do well against them, especially if I can manage to weaken them. I kind of feel like I need a little bit more magic before I do that. It's going to be kind of a tough call. All right, uh, 243 gold left. I do need to decide production for my capital. I think right now mana is very important, and I'm going to go ahead and grab a shrine, I think. Uh, I'm so close to being able to build one. In... You know, the city's going to grow on the next turn, which... If it grows one more level, I should be able to build a shrine in one turn instead of two. So I'm going to take this turn to build probably not another settler quite yet. I want to get probably another butcher, I think. Just get armies ready for dealing with uh, snakes should they try to invade down here just to have some stuff well i don't know getting the settler probably is more important if i do that the city's going to take five turns to grow so i'm kind of right back to where i was before i need that city to grow enough to get the shrine that, that's more important right now i need the mana i just don't want to waste a turn on it maybe i can actually just take a turn and produce mana um oh i can't do that without a uh, without a shrine okay all right, I'm just gonna make a unit. Uh, anybody will do, really. I just, some 
decently good. How we'll do another butcher. That'll work. Um, that leaves me with still plenty left over for a uh, settler. I might actually, you know what? I know I'm going to be able to get better swarm darters later, but for now, just to have some on defense. Eh, uh, you know, I'm going to, okay, I'll get a butcher, but I might make some swarm darters here in the coming turns after maybe I build that shrine just to defend that city because the sooner I can get that fully under my control the better and if I can get a wood wall in there with some swarm darters on top of it whether or not they really have the vault of knowledge buff um, they're still going to do pretty well defending so I'm, I'm not going to get too caught up in waiting for like the best of the best unless it just takes me that long anyway uh, dread siege popped up which is a decently good strategic spell might be useful for going after um uh, can you cast that on can you cast that on like a vassal or a like i'm like an independent city i think i think you can regardless it's relatively quick to get so i'm gonna pick that up and keep kind of cruising towards revive hero or whatever it's called fortunately this guy didn't die which means he lives to scout on another day We'll just follow the road and hopefully it leads me to a city which is mad at me. Let me know when you're ready to talk because he certainly can't do anything about it. Um, let's see, is there a path through the mountains that way? No, but I think... Uh, I'm kind of tempted to run him over here to see what's over there, but I'm not going to do that. He should be safe here. They, they don't come out of their borders to attack, so I should be able to park him right here and then just run straight through. All right, and then uh, I can get... I'm just gonna build a city. Okay, he was tunneling up and kind of around like this. That's right. Just pick up more gold for me. And I think that city was gonna go here, but I wanted to count this out again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I'll be safe here. This looks good. And that's actually just going to be a fort for now. Whoops. Build a fortress. There we go. So I actually did blow through quite a bit of money on that turn. Oh, crap. You know what? I blew through too much. Well, uh, maybe not. I, I can get more from digging, so it's not quite the end of the world. I should be able to scrounge up enough to get that hero. Army requires your orders. Okay, here is the scout and... I want him to go this way. This is really pretty isolated up here. Um, okay, well, at least I got a view of what's behind him. He's still in range of that haunted boneyard, though, which kind of scares me. Looking for good spots for cities up here. I'm not too thrilled with what I'm seeing. This already existing cities look okay, but... That boneyard right in the middle of everything is kind of a problem. I'll have him... Okay, it looks like there's an enchanted armory over there. I'm thinking that combined with the orc... Wait, hang on. The orc city could reach both of those, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Yeah, that could reach... Ooh, okay. This orc city just became a high priority. Because with the enchanted armory and the, and the dungeon, I could make some really friggin' good shock troopers and wouldn't mind having a good strong frontline melee unit because the goblins are kind of so fragile all right let's just sneak this guy right on here and wouldn't you know it i can actually reach the aceberries on this turn i think i can even go a little further they got four movements so um nuts Okay. I don't want him to hang around here, so one, two, three, four. We'll do one, two, double back. And I'm not going to be able to... Oh, wait, are they at peace with me? No, they're at war. Okay, so this guy needs to get through their territory somehow. And that's going to be easier said than done, because their borders are really big. But staying here with the undead right there is also not a good idea. So I think the best he's going to be able to do is get to like there. 
You can run, make it pretty far on, oh wait, no, I, I can't enter his territory without getting caught. I might be able to run him just straight through it on the next turn, so we'll see. It's going to be kind of close. All right, Lost Souls chasing the dwarf. That's normal, I guess. 19, can't move there for 16. So that leaves me with five moves. So I can go one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then back down this way. And I've spotted another... There's a lot of dead crap around here. Okay, um, I want to meet those dragons. If I can get dragon stuff. Okay. Negotiate. I can't do that yet. It is too expensive, but I definitely will. Just not right now. Okay, I like having those dragons so close to everything, though. That's a nice spot for a dragon city nestled really pretty well within my side of the map. Oh yeah, he's the one going back up here. I will have him just hang out in this city for now. The capital. Alright, he's the one who grabbed the gold on the last turn. Going to run him straight down past this thing. Uh, I wish he had swimming. That would be nice. Love to go grab that treasure. So runestone of cold fury down here. That that is something that if my army got down there, it could pick up and not have to worry about uh, the guy up in the tomb there. But I think he's too far away for it to really matter much. I might actually use that runestone of the cold fury to go clear a lich castle way up there. It, it's a long ways away, but it might be the only way I can safely clear a lich castle for a while. The reason I'm talking about that is the Runestone of Cold Fury does give units strong will for their next battle. But that's a little ways off. I've still got to like clear out a lot of crap that's in the way first. Probably we'll just capture that orc city there. Um, have this guy keep going. He's doing good down there. All right, uh, this fortress is done, and I think... I, I, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this builder now. Um, he might actually just stay with that army down here, because sending him all the way back up seems a little wasteful. I could clear space down here to put a city on this side of the river, or lava, that could get some decent structures, including that. That'd be good for gold. Um, it's got a magic library, which would probably be a massive pain in the butt to clear, so I don't think I'm quite ready for that. I think for now, this guy is going to stay here. He can't do anything else on this turn anyway, so... Um, I probably will leave these two little dirt walls here. Well, you know what? No, I probably won't. There's not really a reason for me to do that. It's... The, the more wetlands I can get for this city, the better, because it's going to have a lot of lava in its territory, and I really need to offset that. Okay. Shooting stars. Can discuss alliance proposal. That's great, but I can't fork over 458 gold right now, so I'll just have them keep pestering me about that. I'm going to have a lot of people pestering me about alliance proposals pretty soon. And uh, everything else can wait, and we will end the turn. All right, so I need to start thinking about who's going to go and clear that crap. This is going to be another very difficult battle, I think. Only being able to bring one stack on with me. I would love to outnumber these guys, but these these watchers always give me trouble. It's that doom gaze. The fact that it can petrify is just terrifying. Um, does this guy have access? anything that would be particularly useful oh uh okay looks like we get to do this again so hold on <laughs> all done yep those guys did not attack me of course the lost souls did but what else is new all right let me just slip right on through your territory here and carry on 
Go ahead and sanctum there. Uh, more stuff on the water. Would be nice if my scout was down here. Because this guy can't get it. I could get um, tech for that. Basic seafaring. But uh, pretty single-handedly focused on getting my hero back right now. Losing her was a problem. An orc rogue. You know what? I'm okay with that. I kind of like rogue heroes. And the fact they can charm is very useful. Um, I don't have enough gold, but I can get it. Let me have this guy do a bit more digging. Yeah, go like this. I want to leave at least one cavern wall here. I, I want to make sure I don't dig through the whole thing. Yep, okay, we're good. As long as I'm not digging through the whole thing. All right, that gives me just enough to buy him. Let's have him show me your talents and double check. I do like, orc rogues are kind of nice just because they're very melee focused with flank attacks and stuff and orcs have more melee damage. So that backstab can really, really hurt. Um, yep, you will do my friend. Now have a rogue. All right, he's going to hang out with these guys for a little while, and I'm sure he's got points to spend, so let's take a quick look at what he's got. For the rogues, I pretty much always grab, pick up sprint right off the bat. I don't feel like I really need counter poison for this group on account of them being goblins. Um, besides the stuff that's gonna spawn out of that Eldritch Pit, it's most likely gonna be more electrical damage in nature, which is kind of what he's here to deal with. So we'll do sprint and um, maybe throw some, throw a little bit of health on him. Uh, dirty half dozen, that gives, okay, that's bonuses against devout units. I'm trying to look for something that buffs the whole army. Stronger than steel gives armor piercing, not particularly useful right now. Quick dash is an amazing spell. I think I might actually just pick up Quick Dash. That's incredibly useful. I wish you could get the one that gives all the units in the army poison damage, but can't quite yet. Thought the wait on that. Uh, I will give him maybe just a little bit of resistance because he isn't work. So we'll bump that up just a bit. Resistance gets expensive real fast, but I don't, I, I don't mind getting one level of it. All right, this guy is making good time. And that will upgrade on the next turn. In the meantime, we got stuff to clear. So, the settler's gonna be actually one turn later getting there than what I originally thought. Um, that untouchable is going to be fine digging around up here. This can, you know what, I, I'll i open this up. This is fine. All right, butcher's done. I'm not going to be able to afford to buy anything on this turn. So maybe stuck. Oh man, I really need money for a shrine. See, now I could build the shrine, but I don't have the money for it. Um, maybe I can pick up some though. I mean, depending on what I clear first. So if I go after the inn, I might be more likely to get money and maybe some experience, which could help in this battle. Or I could clear the mine, which is definitely going to give me money, enough for a shrine, um, which will also leave me with more magic for upcoming battles against other things. You know what? I think, I think I'm going to go for the money first. I know it's the one that's more out of the way, but... Also, I would need money for clearing the inn, and the city's gonna, uh, that's gonna grow on the next turn, so that definitely needs to be cleared by then. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get the gold mine first. That's, that's gonna be, I think, the smartest economically. Now, that's a pretty weak army on there, so shouldn't give me any trouble. I, oh man, though, hang on, this guy is level six. So if I play my cards right, and I know he's gonna get, two upgrades on the next turn and that was intentional if i can get him to level up 
I can maybe try to convert that human cavalry to my side and then upgrade it to a knight. So I think, unfortunately for the poor little halflings, I think they're going to be first to go here. All right, I'm going to dig these out. That way both of my armies can get in on the halfling. So shouldn't have any trouble with this fight. Um, and then probably stick him back in the fort for now. There's not really anything he can dig out over here. I would like to get on the other side, but he's gonna need a fair amount of escorting to get over there. Unfortunately, there's just rock cavern walls in my way everywhere. All right, um, who's gonna be better off to have... So, Mogwai benefits pretty much everybody. Defense command, range command, um, melee command. He pretty much benefits only melee units with sacred arms. Um, but pretty much everybody is melee, so... Mogwai's got two cavalry, and you know what? This guy's army is a little bit... No, I think this is good. I actually like their setup. I think that's fine. Move Mogwai here. Probably should have switched them because Goblins would have benefited from being on the other type of tile, but that's okay. I'm gonna have I'm gonna launch the attack with Mogwai. Manual combat. Alright. So the goal of this battle is to get lots of XP on the Theocrat if possible. And hopefully he doesn't die. Alright, you've thrown your chickens, you've had your fun. Sit down, shut up, and no, they didn't actually slow him down even. Um, that is something they can only do once this battle. Okay. All right. Uh, you guys are going to come running down here. I think, okay, they're a range attacker. So I think for starters, I can try to get him a kill on those guys, which shouldn't be too hard. Um, Mogwai can run here. Mogwai can actually hit him with a couple arrows, I think. And there's only one Eagle Rider in here and just a bunch of farmers. Yeah, this is going to be an easy battle. Mogwai, I think I'm going to have move here. Make sure... Oh, that Eagle Rider is more than capable of hitting him from there. I'm going to move him here, actually. That gives him a couple shots on those guys. I can also eagerly, easily protect him from the Eagle. I can eagerly protect him. All right, uh, take two shots on those guys. Please don't crit. All right, and then I want you to have basically the worst shot possible so it procs as many times as possible, but you're still guaranteed the kill. So if I arrange my units just right, and I probably will use the butcher for this because the eagle's the one that would come running up to it, I can do kind of like this and sort of block my own unit but I'm still guaranteed, well, he is a halfling though. You know what? He's a halfling. What am I doing? I just have to assume that won't work. We'll just take that. <laughs> All right, then the eagle can come flying in. Um, I need to protect Mogwai, so you in front, you in front, you slightly less in front because you're damaged. good with him right here and I'm good with him right as probably here probably as close to where that eagle is most I'm expecting the eagle to, eagle to fly in and wing beat on these two units is most likely what it will do it's unlikely he'd go after the single unit when he could get two. Uh, the brew brothers I'll just move the wargs up to deal with them when they come showing up and the Marauders, it doesn't really matter. I also would like to try to get some XP on the Spider Baby, but the most important thing to evolve right now is, well, actually, the Spider. Ooh, getting the Spider. Ah, oh, that actually would be really nice for the upcoming battle. That would give me a solid Tier 3 unit to bring in with me against those, um, uh, those Watcher guys. How close is he? He is very close. Hopefully I can level up both of them. 
in this battle. He's 303 out of 350. I have to be very careful, but I think I can do it. If I can manage to web somebody, okay good, the eagle did exactly what I expected it to. If I can manage to web somebody, then I can make this make this work. Uh, the eagle, though, is a bit too big of a threat. I want him out of here right away. Not, well, <laughs> honestly, he's really not that big of a threat, but he could flank something if he moves, so. Maybe uh, if, if I could actually, it's a little too risky for the spider to go after the eagle, but I think the spider could phase over here and try to web the butcher, and if it fails, I could ride in and save him with the horses. But the halflings don't have great physical protection, so you are a little more likely to web them as long as they don't get lucky. So that's what the spider is going to do. He's going to go, whoops, he's going to go right here and hopefully get a free meal. Nope, I resisted that 60%. Well, crap, I can't be risking the spider, especially if that farmer can reach him. So... Well, does anybody else... Yeah, there's an adventurer. I think there's just one too many things that could go wrong there. What I might do is take a hit with the wargs because I don't want to outright kill him. Uh, but that is a farmer, so I am going to need to do something about him. Oh, I should have weakened him first. I didn't even think about that. Okay, you guys better just go on defense there. I'm not sure what's going to go down here. I'm trying to arrange it so my Theocrat can somehow get the kill on that eagle. Needs to be one more space this way. I can make sure the farmer doesn't... Okay, I think I can arrange this correctly. Yeah, this shouldn't be a problem. It's halfling farmer. He does not have overwhelm as far as I know. Okay, what kind of damage can you do from there? Three to four? All right, so if I do the math right here should be able to get this. I see no reason why Mogwai shouldn't just shoot arrows, although I'd feel more comfortable with him shooting from this angle, I think. Especially... Please don't kill him! Don't kill him! Okay. You got two shots, three to four damage. I need... And he's got nine health. I need to do just a tiny bit of damage to this guy. Just a little bit. And I think... Flight Doctor is going to be just the thing, but I need to move him to the right position for this to work. As long as he doesn't crit or do max roll every time, I might move him one more. He's got three to four. He's got three to two to three. I'm going to move him here. I feel a little more comfortable with him here, I think. That's two to three times two. Yeah, there's his lucky. Hopefully he doesn't get again. He is flankable now, so... Okay, got it. All right. How close is he now? 321? Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to get it. It's going to be really close. He's going to have to practically solo everything else here. Oh, I still got Touched by Faith on him and Bestow Iron Heart, so those are going to give him some XP. All right, now what I need to do is slow down these guys, the, that halfling farmer. I think I'm gonna use the butcher to do that and just maybe poke them once. They have first strike, so that's a little bit of a nuisance. Um, and I don't necessarily want the butcher to kill them. So how I think I'm gonna do this is actually use the marauder behind it because he's a little weaker and he can shield the two of their attacks, leaving them with one action point, and the Marauder will be fine. Okay, that leaves them with one AP. The Spider can hopefully kill this guy in the next turn. I'm going to do this. We'll take a hit with the Warg, and then run in and hit the Brew Brother once. Or not. Anyway, the spider is going to just unload on the Brew Brother on the next turn. And I'm going to use Weaken on that guy now to help him out. Let's move him up a little bit first. 
He's got no movement, so he's pretty much just stuck there. Okay. Um, everybody else, I think, is in a good position. I actually, I want to, I want to pull these guys back and around, because this is just more XP that I don't want to miss out on. The only one that worries me a little bit is the Slinger because of his ability to range attack, but uh, I'll be okay if I move back like this. He's a prime target for Bestow Iron Heart right now. The Slinger will move up and he will hit something, but that's not a big deal. The Farmer will try to do the same, but these are all cavalry here, so they'll be fine. They can run, run away. And I should be able to continue funneling XP precisely to the units that need it. Alright, had about enough of your lucky crap. Probably need to soften him up too. Okay, the spider should be able to just eat this guy at this point. 39. If he max rolls, he would kill them, but... Uh, he'd have to get lucky and max roll. I don't think my luck is that bad. Okay, nice. Spiders are leveled up, so it's all the dwarf now. And he should be able to just ride in and hit those farmers. In fact, letting the farmers hit him is probably not a bad idea, because he'll get XP from that too. So I need to soften them up just a bit to make sure I get the kill. That's fine. And then... All right, now where are you at? 327 out of 350. He pretty much needs to kill both of those other units, I think, and do some healing. You guys can back off. And I want everybody... Saplings are probably wondering why the heck I'm running away from them at this point, but that's, that's okay. It's all for the levels. I know I'm micromanaging the heck out of this battle, but I feel like it's an important situation to do that and do this in. Um, I will go ahead and... Oh, that's, uh, that's the farmer crap. He's gonna... He's gonna get too, a little too close. Oh wait, I can slip through. Okay, good. Can stay just out of his range. Perfect. Alright. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and do that. Um, I am going to just charge him with this guy. There's really no reason not to. Okay, he leveled. Sure, it'd be nice if I could level. He's gonna take a hit from range attack, but otherwise we'll be okay. And he still got touched by faith, so I think everybody else can just continue running in circles. I just gotta check and make sure that that guy doesn't catch up with anybody. The spider's also got web again, so that could come in handy. I should probably go ahead and uh, weaken this guy. He may go after the Blight Doctor down there, but depending on what route he takes, either the spider will be able to reach him and try to web him, or the, if he goes the other way, I'll be able to run the, the priest away with the rest of the army. But I'm kind of trying to lure him into a spider trap right now. So right here is good. Everybody else can back up. Okay. Now he'll probably... I don't know what he'll do. Because if he moves, I think I kill him. But he might just stay there. I'm hoping this guy goes after the Blight Doctor. Don't you dare do that crap. Okay. He did go after the Blight Doctor, which is fine. Now... He took a couple hits there. He's at 338. He's getting very close. Um, now is when I move him here and bestow Iron Heart on himself. Which got him to 344. And it looks like I'm going to be able to do this. All I got to do is run this guy away now. It 
is a farmer, so it would be ideal to try to web him. Before I go charging in with that Theocrat. He can touch by faith on somebody. We'll go ahead and use that on the on the uh, spider, I suppose. Since it's here. Want you right there. Just out of his range. Perfect. And there's the level. So now it doesn't really matter. He's leveled up. And this guy is... I can toast him. He's at 7, so he now has Convert. And that is it. I don't think there's anything my king can do. I can steal, I can do, I can run through my little steel enchantment tricks. So, uh, as I normally do. Um, might need, well, Mogwai's got that longbow that he uh, borrowed from the dead. And I've got plenty of butchers here that also have first strike. So, these guys are not needed. So let's go up here and do a chain steel enchantment. extra XP and Mogwai can soften this guy up or just outright kill him uh, if it wasn't for lucky he would have and then uh, these guys with the first strike and they get a level two all right so many levels for everyone I hope that wasn't too tedious to watch but that kind of had to be done so now I have a hunter spider queen which is great and this guy now has both convert and healing. Absolutely awesome. Okay. Um, what else do I want for him? Maybe I can decide. Monster Slayer might actually be good because I think those eyeball things count as monsters, those watchers. But for now, I don't think I need to make a choice. I. I'll pick something up. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of have to think about that. I don't think I'll get to this battle up here in this episode, but I do think I can get to that gold mine. Um, yeah, I can definitely do the gold mine. This one I'll bring both heroes in on. Since it is in a little funneled area that I can't get to otherwise. Um, get Mogwai. There he is. And we'll bring along all the best of the best. I think that spider can come in on this one. That's very useful when trying to convert something. Um, we are up against civic guards. These are pretty crap units. I'll just bring whoever's good because whoever's good could use XP because they're probably who's going to be fighting up here anyway. Uh, definitely want a Blight Doctor so I can weaken the horse. And probably bring along somebody... Somebody with... Do these guys have sprint? No, they don't. Okay. Bring along somebody with first strike. I'll bring this butcher. Really bringing the best units so that I can level them and make them more useful in the coming battle. Alright, that looks good to me. Uh, we'll send the spider in because it got all its movement back. And this will hopefully give me enough money to buy a shrine in my capital city. So, like, kind of the order of how everything is working out on this turn is, is almost perfect. Um, I'm going to have this guy start off with a Bustel Iron Heart on himself because he's damaged and that's about the right amount of health to fix. Um, I want the Butcher... Or, not the Butcher, the, uh, the Blight Doctor somewhere near the horse. I actually kind of don't want the Butcher too close to the horse because I'm afraid he'll murder the poor thing. Let's uh, move Mogwai up on this side, kind of get the spider ready, and see if we can lure that guy into a convert. Alright, so the idea here is probably they don't have a great way through. This is like a single tile path, and he can get just about that far. I'm going to probably move my beetle here. I'll let him charge the beetle, I think. And... Yeah, that'll work. Have the beetle sit there. Which is a little damaged. But he, he'll be okay. He can handle one charge. And then I'll have... This guy ready to convert. I think... Um, Touch by Faith won't really help him. In this situation. I might need to heal him later. But for now... We'll leave him there. 
I'll leave the butcher kind of over here. Mogwai can move here and maybe start hitting something with arrows if there's anything in range. Not quite. Next turn, I suppose. He can get in range for the weaken. Is he out of range? Yeah, he is out of range for Mogwai, which means he'll be out of range for the Blight Doctors, too. The spider can phase, so it's got a little more flexibility in where it goes. But I think for now, I'll probably put him off to the side here anyway. Just so he's kind of in position and ready to go. And then uh, for you guys, I'll give you Touch by Faith anyway, just because why not? Wait, is there a priest? Who's, who's he most likely to shoot at? If they all gang up on this guy, I'll at least kind of help protect him from the priest. Okay, that's as good as it gets. Hopefully he comes charging right into my trap. He did, okay. Those guys got a level. Now I need to get him out of there. But uh, first things first, plan A. We try to get this guy on our side. So start by weakening, then converting, which I'm gonna do from here actually to give that beetle more of a clear route out and into cover. 65%, come on. Ah, oh, dang it, all that work and I didn't get the six, okay. Well, it does happen, um, which means it's now, I'm afraid going to have to die. That butcher there should be okay. I'm, I'm gonna probably try to, okay, those two civic guards aren't gonna be able to kill this spider. Whoops. Um, so I think I'm gonna go for a web on that guy or I could just, kill him actually I think he's weakened after all yeah just kill him all right that keeps him safe those guys shouldn't be able to kill the spider but oh that's a cross or that's an archer not a oh, crap the spider might actually be in some danger I may need Mogwai to go over there and kind of help out um these guys are not really in any position well maybe they are they've still got 29 health so they're not like out of it yet the spider needs a little bit of help if everything gangs up on the spider I think I would lose it I don't want that maybe maybe mogwai has got a good spell vengeful frost to spell not really um, what I really need out there is a melee unit getting in their face and if the beetle was healed and had more action points he'd be perfect for that but he's not I think I'm going to... There's really no reason for these guys not to go after the priest, because I can get some of that life steal back. Oh, and actually, they just straight up killed the priest, so that's one unit out of the picture. Um, I'm going to... He can't really get to anything to help, so I'm going to move him back. Mogwai needs to get up here and kind of at least, I think, get in the way of these archers so they can't get a great shot at the spider, at least from the flank. I can prevent them from doing that. Can also prevent anything from running in and doing a melee attack in case that does more damage. So yeah, Mogwai goes here and I think sits on defense since I can't kill anything. That drastically lowers the amount of damage those archers can do. All right, I think I'm good. And we'll back this guy up a little bit. I think I'm okay here. They might. I'll go after the butcher, actually. No, they do still want the spider. Well, they backed off to do it, though, so that's good. Having Mogwai there still helps. Okay. So spider is now safe. And he's about to go pay these guys a visit, I think. Oh, yes. Most definitely. Okay, um... Let's kind of heal this guy on his way past. Can, I can move him as far as here and get some noxious vulnerability on those guys, which is what I think I'm going to do. Mogwai can handle the archers just fine, so you can move here and go kind of charging back in as far as you can. You can heal him, which 
is so nice to have now. Mogwai can... Mogwai can go after the archer. The spider I want here. Could try to web again, or I could just straight up try to kill the guy. I think I'm option for going for option number two. Because I can... He resisted on all accounts. Okay. Still can kill him. Uh... Well, crap. Now the spider's potentially in trouble. Well, now I've got the butchers that can help, but dang that lucky. Okay. Um, let me get these archers off Mogwai. Or off the spider. And I think I'm just going to come in with these guys from the back. Would you stop getting lucky, please? That guy's gotten lucky three times. I hate this event so much. Okay, he, he's not going to kill the butcher. And he's pinned between the butcher and the spider. So all I really have to do is prevent the archer from getting after anything. And Mogwai can do that with just a simple charge. Archer's out of commission. Okay. So these guys are fine. They can melee attack the spider. But... They're only going to hit him. They probably This guy will probably die before he gets both hits off. Theoretically, there's no way for them to kill the spider, in theory. I'm doing the math right. Because max damage of 7 times 5 is 35. Okay. We're good. I was getting a little worried there that RNG was just going to mess me over too bad and I wasn't going to be able to do anything about it. Well, unfortunately, we did not pick up that uh, that guy. But we did get... We did get a little bit of gold. And I'm beginning to think we didn't get enough. You get four gold every time you tunnel, right? There is nothing for that guy to tunnel. There, This guy's out of movement. This guy's out of movement. I think I will have to run this guy down here just to... Wait, where is he? I think I'm going to have to run him all the way down there just to get that last little bit of money I need because the shrine is 75, right? I'm not wrong about that, I don't think. Uh, shrine is 75. I need that on this turn. Um, and I can build it in one turn now, right? Also double checking that. 70, I have exactly 75 production, so this is by far the most efficient time to build it. Um, I am going to have to do that because I can't guarantee there's dirt up there, and I know there's soft dirt down here, so... That gives me literally exactly enough. <laughs> Alright. I still want that guy to get out of that area soon, but okay, we can get the shrine with exactly 75 gold and exactly 75 production. And, uh, oh wait, that's not an undead camp. Where was the undead? That's the undead camp, okay. I still want him to get out of here ASAP. And that looks like a dead end down there, so he can move back up this way. Okay, I can upgrade my hero. Oh wait, no, not again. He's, he's already done that. He's got absorb pain as an option, which is maybe an interesting, could be an interesting choice can't really get that in any other way and I do quite like absorb pain he could sit in the back and heal himself while the big beetle does damage or something but uh I'll have to think about that think about what his upgrades will be Mogwai leveled up as well um I think what whatever I'm going to give him is most likely going to be like a monster slayer I think stuff to help out in this upcoming battle against these guys which I'm pretty sure are cal counted as monsters yeah I mean, if that's not a monster, I don't know what is. Um, okay. So I'm going to give Mogwai Monster Slayer. And I'm going to give him... He doesn't really need armor piercing for this one. I kind of want to just make him tougher. I'm going to give him hit points and defense. So that he can more reliably go after enemy units in melee if he needs to. Or war cry in defense. Actually, yeah, he needs resistance more than anything else going up against those things. Maybe I'll give him resistance in defense. 
Just to give, oh, I should have maybe given him spirit. Did I have spirit protection as an option? Maybe not. Um, does this guy have any sort of spirit protection buff he can give his army? Aura, Instant Wrath, Mighty Meek. Uh, no, I don't think he does. Unless he's already got it active. Nope. Doesn't have anything like that, which kind of surprises me. I thought the Theocrat had some sort of army, army-wide spirit buff, uh, spirit resistance buff that it can do. Maybe I'm, I could just be wrong about that or overlooking something. So if I am, just let me know. Um, but yeah, these guys are going to go down in the next battle, and I think. Um, I need to reform my armies. I need to reform my armies to save money. Um, this guy is just going to carry on this way, I think. I'm not going to... Well, I can't build a road even if I wanted to. But if I can get him down here to tunnel, that'll help me out with gold a little bit, which is not doing so great right now, despite all the crap. I think I just have too many units. Getting this city up over here will, will help a bit. And I will get more on the next turn when that grows so for now let's reform and i can get a little bit of that gold back um move mogwai here i'm gonna keep the more like goblins with mogwai i think like more melee heavy cavalry kind of stuff kind of units i do want at least one of these guys with him and we'll send a butcher actually i want that guy healing. Actually, they both need healing, kind of badly. Okay, well, you can go with Mogwai, you can go with him. And we'll send one Butcher with this guy. One can stick with Mogwai. Spider, I'll leave with the Dwarf, and probably the Dwarf's gonna kind of have the crappy army here, but that's sort of okay, I guess. It's going to get all reshuffled next turn anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Can the dwarf move? I'm not sure that the dwarf can move onto a wetlands tile. It's six movement. Yeah, he can do it. Okay. The spider has wetlands walking, I think. Should have... No, it's got forestry. I don't think the spider can move onto that next tile. So we'll keep everybody together. Okay, so that buffs my gold income back up to 74. You can see how big of a difference that makes just from having a leader in each army. Um, in fact, I can get even a little more out of that now that I have this new hero if I bundle these guys together. So like that. And now I'm up to 80, which is almost twice what I had before. I'm going to go ahead and send these guys down this way. I think that uh, there's nothing spawning there yet. I will... Oh, they have a quest for me. Um... And the Undead Scourge for a big beetle. Oh, guys, as much as I would love to, I'm going to have to decline. Well, okay, hang on. What what am I what am I looking at here? Let's let's actually look. So it's a lot of revenant guys. Um I don't really have anything good up here to deal with that. Butchers can't life steal from them. I mean, they are just infantry. It's not like they're super tough. It's actually a fairly easy quest for getting a big beetle, but I'm going to need to build that army a little bit before I can do that. So is it worth doing? Well, you know, I think I'm kind of leaning towards it is, just because even if I... I, I, can't, I couldn't buy that city anyway, even if I wanted to. I don't have enough money for it, so... I'm thinking go ahead and accept it, but then again, I can't buy troops either. So, I don't know. It's kind of a catch-22. Why don't you guys let me know what you think? I think this is about when I need to wrap the episode up anyway. So let me know what you think. Should I uh, should I take their quest to kill these guys and get a free big beetle? Which would be really, really nice. Um, or should I just decline it and, and uh, try to buy them later on? I, I, I honestly don't know. I think I, think I probably could kill it. Could get it. Um, once the shrine finishes, I could crank out more goblins pretty easily like tier 3 butchers, which are still going to kill the undead. Um, so I, I'm leaning towards accepting that. But uh, you can let me know what you think in the comments, as always. 
And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this episode, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're not a big fan of the whole min-maxing stuff, then I apologize. The battles down here with my leader's armies were kind of uh, did a lot of that in this episode. But sometimes that's really important, and I do call this an advanced strategy series for a reason. So I guess that's why I kind of feel obliged to do stuff like that when I, when I notice the opportunity. But thank you so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next time. Shout out to all my Patreon supporters, including Tier 3 supporters Blitz, Braden, Adam James, Jim Bro, Tarsac, and Tibby and Army. Thanks so much, everybody.